Hello everybody, this is Kate at the Library of Whispers and today we're going to take a look at some, some maps actually probably just one map to start with this is a bit of an experiment, I don't know whether it will work or not it might be too crackly this map has a kind of plastic coating on it it's a map of Holy Island and Bambra, Wooler, Belford, and Sea Houses, which is in the northeast of England. And I thought we could take a look. I'm going to use my magnifying glass to help you see things. Obviously I can't get the whole map in all in one go. So let's fold it out and concentrate on certain areas. some blocks on certain areas. So this here is Holy Island. This is the North Sea here. Let's see if we can see. Let's bring Holy And this is the causeway here. So you would come along this road in your car and you would drive along this causeway bridge, very um, shallow bridge, till you get to here. And you can only do this at certain times in the day. And here is Lindisfarne National Nature Reserve, Blenheim Flats. This is called the Links. And there are various Places, the water tower, the Lindisfarne castle, the bungalow, cockle stone, riding stone, and the priory, Lindisfarne priory. Lindisfarne. And in here, 
this is a book on Lindisfarne Castle which we've always already had a, a little look at so I'm just going to read this about the island itself Beblow Crag, on which Lindisfarne Castle stands, is quite unlike the rest of the island. A 30 metre high tooth of burr rock protruding, protruding from the flat pasture land. Geology is the reason. It was formed when a cone of molten dolerite, known locally as windstone, forced its way through a crack in the surrounding limestone. In 635, St. Aidan was summoned from Iona by King Oswald of Northumbria to found a monastic community on this remote spot. Farn comes from the Celtic Farn, a place of retreat. If, if Lindisfarne had been a Mediterranean island, he would have built his church up on the crag. But this is Northumberland and he sensibly chose more sheltered ground on the southwest corner of the island, away from the North Sea gales. Aidan was succeeded in 685 by St Cuthbert, who had reluctantly agreed to exchange his bleak hermitage on the inner farm for a bishop's mitre. Cuthbert's holy life and the discovery of his miraculously preserved body inspired the creation of the Lindisfarne Gospels, and transformed the island into a place of pilgrimage. But the growing wealth of the monastery also made it a target. From Beblo Crag, the worried monks could have watched the smoke rising from their farms on the mainland, as first Danish Vikings and then the marauding Scots pillaged the coastland opposite. In 793, the church itself was gutted by the, the heathen, the last Danish raid in 875 drove out the monks, who carried with them the precious relics of St Aidan and St Cuthbert, and the Lindisfarne Gospels, on a journey that was to last seven years. In 1082, a party of Benedictine monks from Durham Cathedral, where St Cuthbert's relics had finally come to rest, returned to the island. Fifty years later, they refounded the Priory Church on its old site, christening Lindisfarne, Holy Island, in Cuthbert's memory. The Priory ruins are now in the care of English heritage. Despite the continuing threat from the Scots, Beblow Crag seems to have remained unfortified. So this picture here, this is the opening page of St Matthew's Gospel from the Lindisfarne Gospels, now in the British Library. They were illuminated by a monk named Aidfrith about 698. And this here on the right, this is King Egfrid trying to persuade Cuthbert to leave his hermitage on the inner farm and become Bishop of Lindisfarne, painted by William Bell Scott in 1856 for Wallington. This is actually all about the castle. I always return to this picture because I think it's so amazing. This is the castle here. This picture. Oops. Well, I hope you enjoyed that um, 
little video of the map and the small reading. Um, this is Kate at Library Whispers. Hope to see you very soon. Bye bye.